Like thousands of women across India, Sabla Devi's day starts while the world is still asleep. Often having to walk miles for water at the crack of dawn, the life of rural Indian women isn't an easy one. After single-handedly working around the house, women then proceed to the farms. It's women like Sarla Devi who work the hardest on most rice farms in India, especially the ones in the hill state of Uttarakhand. The burden of work only increases with the passage of the day. The tough life of these women mirrors the hardships faced by farmers in the process of rice cultivation across India. Since the beginning of time, rice cultivation has been considered much more than mere farming in India. Rice for Indians is almost a way of life. Cultivation of rice in India requires very hard labour. The returns are often meagre for the back-breaking effort required. But this truth is now witnessing a transformation. Developed by Father Henri de Laloni in Madagascar in the early 1980s, the system of rice intensification or SRI uses almost half of the water required to grow rice as opposed to the traditional methods of rice cultivation. A revolutionary method, SRI requires almost no standing water for paddy to grow and increases the yield by up to one and a half times. More importantly, this method drastically reduces the physical labour associated with rice farming and in addition does away with harmful chemicals by making use of organic manure for pest control. As SRI uses less standing water, it's very important to flatten the field before sowing to ensure that water doesn't stay and every part of the field is equally irrigated. Seeds are soaked in a wide mouth container for a day and the ones that float to the top are separated. The seeds are then kept in a jute bag for 36 hours and periodically sprinkled with water to facilitate sprouting. A four-layered nursery is prepared using a mixture of mud and organic manure. The sprouted seeds are divided into four parts and sprinkled evenly across the nursery. The seeds are covered with hay stalks to prevent them from direct sunlight. A few days later, the saplings are ready to be sown. A marker is then used to form a 10 by 10 inch grid-like pattern. The fields are left with one inch of water 12 hours prior to sowing to allow the marker to work with ease. Breaking away from the traditional method of transplanting, a single 10 to 12 day old plant is sown at each intersection on the grid. On the 10th, 20th and 30th day of transplanting, a weeder machine is used to till the fields. An array of homemade pesticides is sprinkled after every weeding. SRI requires a polar shift in the mindset of the farmer, as the process is different at many levels. Many of them were convinced that the single plant wouldn't flower and the crop would fail. The use of homegrown pesticides like green manure ensures the spread of the roots and also helps in the growth of microorganisms besides airing the crop. The distance between saplings ensures good sunshine and wind for each plant to grow. After the crop flowers, the fields are left with one inch standing water for a period of 20 days. The system of rice intensification does not require the fields to be irrigated during the final 20 days before harvesting. We are doing this for 3 years, so first of all, it's a little bit 
क्योंकि हमारे खेत टेढ़े मेढ़े हैं छोटे हैं तो हमने ये सोचा था पहले कि ये बड़े खेतों में होता है पर हमने बीच से मार कर लिया और जो कॉर्नर बच गए उसको उसको हमने बाद में जो है मार्किंग करके धान लगा दिया कि मतलब ये छोटे खेतों में भी हो सकता है दिस सिस्टम ऑफर्स हाई क्वान्टिटी एनिमल फॉडर As a result of increased yield per hectare and higher stocks, the increased animal fodder is one of the best byproducts of SRI as opposed to the traditional method. Encouraged by the results, many civil society groups across India decided to spread SRI to far-flung villages. These groups trained thousands of farmers across many states in India. But the journey wasn't easy. In the beginning most farmers were skeptical about the entire process. One of the biggest achievements of such civil society groups has been the advent of master trainers. Imparted with all theoretical and practical knowledge about the system of rice intensification, it's the sheer dedication and hard work of these master trainers that has helped usher in a new phase of agriculture in India. जो हमारी जिम्मेदारी होती है ये है कि गांव में जो है काश्तकारों को जो है तैयार करना है श्री धान के लिए किस तरह से इसमें जो है नर्सरी डालते हैं कितने दिन की नर्सरी होती है इसमें जो है कम पानी लगता है कम बीज लगता है थोड़ा सा लोगों को जो है विश्वास दिलाने के बाद है जिन्होंने जो है एक्सपोजर भी नहीं किया है फिर जो है फर्स्ट बार हम उनके साथ कर रहे हैं उनको जो है थोड़ा जो है पहले विश्वास में लाना जरूरी है Besides working non-stop around the house, collecting water and firewood, traditional rice cultivation would ensure that women toil endlessly on the farms. Previously, women would do most of the work attached with rice farming right from planting till the harvest of the crop. With the advent of SRI and the reduction in the manual labor, women now find it easy to assign extra time to their children and family. But most importantly, women now have the luxury of spending time on themselves. जब हम तीन निराई गुड़ाई कर था तो ये खेत दो या तीन दिन में कर था। अब जब हम दो या तीन खेत ये के बाहर कर देना थोड़ दिए में। Women have grabbed this opportunity with both hands. Some of them have started small-scale enterprises of their own. जब हमें समय मिलते हैं, भाई बहन को पढ़ाती हूँ, अपनी दुकान में अचार बनाती हूँ, जूस बनाती हूँ। आराम करने की भी टाइम मिलता है। Many families are now investing in crops that wouldn't have been possible had they continued to cultivate rice under the traditional method. Unknowingly, the system of rice intensification has marshaled a new dawn of women empowerment and helped women of Indian villages find their voice. In the rice-eating mountain states like Himachal and Uttarakhand, the average farm holding size is about one acre. Hardly six months of food grain requirement is fulfilled from their farmlands. And that's why we believe that SRI should be adopted by each and every farmer in the mountain states. And it has the potential of addressing not only their food requirement, but also the livelihood needs. Whenever an age-old practice is challenged by a new approach, it always meets some opposition. Those who have adopted this system have realized that SRI is not just about accepting a new technique, but adapting a better life. Nay, Takiniki, I shed on a 